my loop right here. So oh, yeah. All right. How'd that work? Everything kind of worked out fine, right? Went away. Here we are. We're in Boulder again. We're live. Um, we haven't done a show in a little while. I'm nervous. I don't know. I don't know how to feel. Maybe I've lost it. Well, I never had the touch, so that's not a concern. I'm really excited. Um, I've got Tim Blumenthal from Bikes Belong. Welcome. Happy to be here. Yeah. Rob Shuham, who's part of the cottage and, and always, yeah, uh, always just yeah. around. He's Ed, Ed McMahon. Yeah. yeah good. Um, Tim, yeah. Tim, uh, um, would, would, you, would it be fair to say you're a bike advocate and that you're a consumer advocate for bikes? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, advocacy is not about. the greatest word. Why? But, well, it, I feel like it's it's more advocacy sounds so serious. Oh, uh, okay. So, you know? so you're a lobbyist. That that sounds more serious to me. No, uh, advocate, really? lobbyist, a lot of and other things. So too. you're a lot of you're a lot of stuff. Yeah. Bicycle, bicycle cheerleader, maybe cheerleader, ambassador. Okay. Bottom line is we have a ton of stuff to give away. On oh, top of that's the cool, line. That, I think it's the bottom line for most people that watch. It's like they just want stuff. I don't, yeah, you got to understand our, our viewer, you know, other than Oprah. Now, Oprah watches the show. She's got everything she needs. So I don't think that she's really tweeting in to try to get stuff. But you can tweet us at Fearless Force. Is that our new Twitter handle? Fearless Force. And uh, send, on, send in some questions. If we read your question uh, on the show, you're going to win something. We got some really good stuff too. We've got this um, messenger bag, which happens to be the messenger bag that I use. I'm sure it's the messenger bag that you use. Absolutely. It, it is, it's sick. I'm just going to say one thing here. <laughs> this, this pocket, if you ride right now and you have a computer, um, this pocket changes your life. I, you, you, can't, you can't go on without it. So we've got that bag. We've got water bottles. We've got... Um, what would this be? A bottle opener. That would be a bottle That'd opener. That'd be a bottle opener yeah. by Park Tools. Yeah. And uh, beer and bikes go together, so you're going to need that. Um, we've got a t-shirt. We've got, actually, this same jacket. The yeah. official Bikes Belong jacket. Someone's yeah. going to get People that. People for Bikes campaign that we'll talk about. Jacket. Yeah. yeah. And Bikes Belong. And what is, the, what is your rank there? We're triple, well, triple corporal, I think, it um, looks like. Let's see at the end of the show. You can decide, okay? <laughs> All right. All right. I, mean, I, I'm, I start out as a buck private. And I'm hoping to get to be a sergeant first class. And your and your actual rank would be president, though. Are yes. You president? Okay. Yes. Um, so we're giving away a bunch of stuff. Send in your tweets. Um, if I don't have the right questions, you can help out. Uh, so we'll do that. Tell me a little bit, like going back, sure. way back. How did you get into bicycles? Wow. You know. I uh, the way that I got into bicycling was I had a paper route and I nice. uh, had 70 papers and I rode a Raleigh three speed and uh, rode it until I was 16 and then immediately gravitated like everybody did to trying to drive and find a car to drive and um, and then I saw which Raleigh three speed like the chopper no the, no. no I wish you I know, had so a chopper. It, it was sort of the classic uh, English Raleigh three okay. speed you know super long wheelbase and what paper were you delivering grit. Uh, Remember grit? I do remember grit, and I think the way that <laughs> grit always had the paper boy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it was not the grit. It was a, a Gannett paper called the Porchester Daily Item. A real newspaper. Uh, yes. Yeah. Back in the day when there were lots of them. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Pro probably in a messenger bag. Not too different. From were that. you pretty good at the throwing? Were you like? Uh, I only threw when there were nasty dogs. You know. Mm. I, I mean, in other words, uh, you always went up and you put it on the uh, front porch. But there were two houses where. Where there were just unbelievable, you know, dogs, and then you had to throw over their head, you know, to hit and land it and perch it on the porch. No, it was, and, and I, it was it was a crazy job. I delivered papers oh, for did. a while too, yeah. and and my bike, the basket was huge. I mean, you remember the baskets yeah. for delivering papers? They don't even yeah. make them anymore. It was so big that if you, you couldn't really. You had to lean the, your bike against a tree or something. Like the kickstand wouldn't hold it up with the papers in there. Yeah. And then if you, you know, you couldn't really stop, so you kind of had to throw. I was a terrible. They were in trees and bushes. Like yeah. no one ever got any paper that I. And there was wet that thing. too. I mean, and they're wet. Yeah, yeah. puddles. I mean, that was the big thing. When when you go and you pick up your papers and you pull them out of like the container and they're already soaked. What right. do you do? So that's. To me, that's a very common experience in some ways yeah. with the bicycle. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a bond that people of our generation have with the bicycle. 
Absolutely. It's different now. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, very good point. I mean, back in the day, when we were kids or when I was a kid, uh, you know, 50% of all kids either rode a bike or walked to school. Now yeah. it's 10%. And yeah. it represented freedom. Totally. Right? I mean, yeah. like that bike. That's what it was for me. Yeah, it was your yeah. freedom. It literally was your freedom. And now, you know, there's just a lot of kids whose parents don't want them riding bikes. That You know, the, there's challenges to the, to the way we've designed neighborhoods. And, and it doesn't seem as safe. Maybe it is. It doesn't seem as safe. Yeah, well, I mean, the United States with 310 million people is different than the United States with 250. Yeah. But I, I, I think the bicycling because of new facilities, mm -hmm. uh, you know, new places to ride, is is actually safer than it was then. I, I think the cars are smaller and the right helmets. Yeah. Right. My kids ride everywhere with helmets. Yeah. I never had a helmet on. I didn't have a helmet. We were jumping things. We were in the streets. I mean, we probably would, could have been killed ten times faster than if you get. But the but the bond but the bond is different yeah. still, right? With the with the new riding that's happening, are kids having the same bond with the bike that that we had? No, I mean the thing that bugs me, and maybe I'm the wrong person to ask, is this whole sort of play date thing. You know, I nearly threw up a little bit in my mouth when, you know, I mean, my, you know, my kids are 30 and 27, but yeah. when I, when I was talking to my friend, I said, uh, so what are you doing? Oh, I'm taking Wait, you me. may be older than me. I just, I said that we were the same era, but. Oh, I'm way older than okay. you. I mean, right. I, 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 my but, kids are not, or you had kids very young, I'm sure. Uh, you're, you you're did kind. actually. You're you kind. Did actually. Yeah. But, but the, but the point is, what's a play date? I mean, we just went out after right. school it's, and your mom right. said, look, be home for dinner. And she kind of half meant it. Right. Right. Yeah. And then it would get dark and then a half hour after dark maybe you'd show up because you'd hear someone screaming yeah right your right, name right yeah i mean and we don't want to get nostalgic. is that your mom or is that my mom yeah right yeah i worry about nostalgia too because everything you know looks better it's like wow ah, when we were kids no it's john McEnroe. the older you get the better you were that's yeah. one of McEnroe's favorites yeah that's right yeah. the yeah. older you get the better you were that's how yeah. i go through my life is that right like, yeah say that to myself you do yeah okay. the better i was but there's some great things happening um, right with over. kids with kids and <laughs> bikes i just keep the show moving you know if it's i start gone. to feel like it's dragging yeah. <laughs> um there's great things happening with kids and bikes and and one of the one of the uh i don't know programs i guess yeah. that you're involved with sure. is the safe routes stuff yeah it's a huge thing it's okay? a huge thing. yeah so i mean so look at it this way 40 years ago 50 percent of kids biked or walked to school. Yeah. Now it's about 10, 12%. And during the same period, child obesity in the United States has tripled. Coincidence? But, no. I mean, what do you think? Don't make me laugh. Okay. I yeah, I mean, 20% uh, of morning traffic in most cities in the United States is one parent driving one kid yeah. to school less than two miles. 20%, that's a new mm. statistic for me. You like that? Yeah, it's a good one. 20% yeah. of all morning traffic is a in some single cities. parent, well, let's just go with everywhere, okay. right. is a single parent driving a single child less than two miles. Right. Yeah. And meanwhile, that's the dramatic. rate of child obesity has tripled. So we run a program called Safe Routes to School National Partnership that's trying to change that. Yeah. And uh, it resonates, believe me. Yeah. I mean, anybody you talk to about that, you know, particularly people who, like us, rode bikes when we were kids, say, yeah. Good program. Yeah. We support that. Yeah. No negatives. Yeah. And kids are into it too, right? Kids are into it. Uh, you know, I think that a lot of what you were talking about, sort of going out doing, and you were a BMXer, you know, yeah. going out doing jumps and being free. If they could, they would do that. But kids are into riding to school. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's fun. Bike riding is fun. It's I think, I think kids are busier now too. <clears throat> I mean, that's part of it as well. Parents Structured. over schedule kids. Structured. They're being driven around all over the place. They're going to three different sports and you know, all these different extracurricular activities and so yeah. bike sort of just kind of disappears. I think that's a good, a that's bit. a good point. So, you know, yeah. mom, yeah. mom yeah. might think it's okay for you to ride to school, but then she knows she's got to pick you up to get you to, you know, guitar right. practice or whatever. Mm -hmm. So having you ride home doesn't necessarily work, yeah. but I think the number one concern is safety. Yes. So when you, when you come out with a program like safe routes, it kind of answers, I think what a lot of the issue is, which is, there's that one street, you know, like right. there was a four lane street that I had to cross as a kid, yeah. you know, and when I was seven, they were like, you're ready. Um, I probably wouldn't do it with my kids. I don't know if, you know, I wouldn't have done it with my kids actually. Right. So, so, but I would have done it if there was a program called Safe Routes to School, because I'd know there was someone there, they were going to have, you know, crossing guards or whatever was needed and right. fine, let's do it. 
Yeah, I mean, and, and the point that we always make is that safe routes to school for kids are safe routes for everybody all day. It's not like all the improvements that you make right. you know, in the infrastructure to make it you know, better signage, better paths, separated stuff. It's not like that stuff goes away at 3.30. It's still there for, you right. know, for anybody. How do you, how do you, how's the program work? Does well, the school raise its hand and say, I want to do this? Yeah, I mean, or? there are a lot of elements to it, you know, but I mean, there's $600 million in federal money that was put into it. And to that specific program? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it sounds like a lot, but then you divide it by five years and 50 states, and it's just yeah. like two yeah. or three million it's dollars. You can't, yeah. build, you can't build a lot <clears throat> with two million dollars when, you, like in Colorado, um, they funded a bunch of things, but the number of applications like four times the number that they can find. But I've read that even painting the bicycle on the street mm -hmm. with those arrows mm -hmm. so that people Sheros, know yeah. those sheros, is that, yeah. is that what that is? Well, I, I think I've been elevated to a corporal. Corporal so, shero. Uh, <laughs> it's sort of like a shero, yeah. 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 I mean, those, those, those help a lot, right? It helps a lot. It's just one element. You yeah. Know? Some, I mean, it <coughs> says bikes belong, right? Well, I, I notice that if I'm riding along and I'm on the edge of the road and yeah. I see one, I'll be like, I want to ride over it. It's just, it's, you know, and, and they're empowering when you're on oh, the yeah. bike, which yeah, is nice. It says you, you belong know? there, yeah, right? Yeah, you, so, feel, you feel good. Don't honk at me. Um, I'm a legitimate user of yeah. this facility. Yeah. So someone just tweeted in, yeah. um, the only thing stopping me from biking in LA is safety. Um, do you have any experience with making streets safer for, for commuters? I think that that's all... Uh, that's sort lion's of, share of the yeah, experience that you've Everything right? that we're working on. Right, so what we're trying to do, number one, is improve the bike infrastructure in the United States. Yeah. Okay? And so uh, what we need to pay most attention to is the 70% of people who would like to ride bikes more, like, 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 like the person who rode in, yeah. uh, but are concerned about their safety. Put okay? the Twitter handle on there, too, so we can call out who. Yeah, I so, think that question is worth a water bottle. You know? so, so, so like safety. water bottle quality question, so safety, whoever that was. He's done with that. So safety That's is going. the number one criteria and the number one reason people aren't getting yeah. bikes in major urban centers. Yeah, let me just lay it out real quick. So 1% of all bike riders in the United States are absolutely expert and fearless. Mm -hmm. You know, and I mean, I call myself that. That's you. I mean, in other words, I'm pretty much comfortable I just to be terrified. But oh, you do? Okay, okay all right. Yeah. So, so you're in the next category, which yeah. is there's 5% people right. who are basically competent, slightly concerned. There are 20% of Americans will never ride a bike ever, yeah. even if you were handing out million dollar checks and gold right. bikes. Right. But then in the middle, and this is the key thing, there's 70% of people in the United States who would ride more, like the person who, who tweeted, mm -hmm. uh, if it's safer. So the question is, how do we make it safer? And it starts with the federal government uh, providing a fair amount of money for good facilities. And you know, most people, the 70%, if the only separation that they have between themselves on bikes and fast moving traffic, you know, 45 miles an hour is a white line, they're not going to feel that comfortable with their right. kids or their parents yeah. or, or if their moms, you know. I thought you were going to say air because most of the time it's not even a white line. Like the white line feels pretty good, actually. Better than nothing. Better than nothing. But, yeah. but that's because you're in that first group. Right. Right? Sort of. Yeah. Close. I mean, I grew up riding bikes in Miami, which is worse than L.A., if that's possible, but it truly is worse than L.A. And L.A. is coming along. L.A. should be the greatest place in the whole world to ride a bike. I mean, it has the best weather Great in the United weather. States. It's yeah. got, the basin is flat. Yeah. And it um, depends where in L.A. you are, too, because there are some pretty terrible areas in L.A. to ride. No, we're saying L.A. in general is pretty bad, right? It is we are bad. saying L.A. in general. West L.A. General. is pretty good. So let's... But Santa Monica is not yeah. bad. I mean, there's their pockets. Yeah, but, there's but, areas. But, but, the, but the point is, um, it's a cost-effective solution to a lot of problems that L.A. has. Right. You know, bad, bad road congestion, bad air quality, obesity like anywhere else. It costs money to build parking spots. It costs 40000 bucks to build a new parking spot in L.A. If you anything you can do to get people to not drive their single occupancy car in and around LA saves the city money. Yeah. I mean if you could if you could wave a wand and take twenty percent of the cars out of LA traffic in the morning, and, kind of a big deal. And you and, could. And you can. Yeah. And you will. You, you and actually we will. can. And we will. Um yeah, Parisian bike sharing. Yeah. Um they saw a five percent decrease in traffic overall, mm -hmm. which is 
I mean, that's a huge Bike thing. sharing is a great thing. Yeah. It really well, is. Well, you know thing. I like bike sharing. I know you do. Yeah. And, and it's good that you do, and you should. And, and the U.S. ones that have come online are really good. It's exciting. Yeah. It's Minneapolis, exciting. you know, uh, Denver. Yeah. Um, Washington, just, I was just in Washington. There are 1,100 bikes there now. Yeah. It's happening. Amazing. Going to be some here. Hopefully soon. Some yeah. coming here. Yeah. yeah. B-Cycle's coming to Boulder. So. Yeah. So that's really great. Yeah. Now, there's some people with bike sharing that, that's, that have the opinion. In Boulder, Boulder may be a unique case where everyone's got a bike. Why do we need bike sharing? Maybe you could answer that question. Well, uh, there are a couple things. One is we, this is a tourism town and mm -hmm. we get a lot of visitors. And if I came here to visit, one thing I would definitely want to do is explore on bike because it's one of the best ways to explore any place that you visit, yep. right? Yep. I'd want to ride down the creek path. I'd want to ride through campus. I want to just check it out, get my bearings. And having that bike there, that's really cool. The other thing is that, um, you know, I think that bike sharing is part of legitimizing bicycling. It kind mm -hmm. of says this is central. It's a transportation solution. Mm -hmm. It's something that we believe in. When Boulder bike sharing comes, even though I have plenty of bikes, yeah. I'm going to use that every chance I can yeah. to just reinforce that bicycling for short trips is the way to go. Well, the, the, the way I sometimes put it to people is why do we need buses if you have a car? You know, it, it is, bike sharing is public transportation. It is. And it's just a bike version of public transportation. Yeah. And it, no one with a car says, well, some people might. Let's get rid of those buses, you know. Right. It's just another way to get around. Yeah, and it's I mean, a great way to get around. Boulder's done a cool thing. Boulder's principal transportation goal is to keep vehicle miles traveled at 1994 levels. Yeah. And they've basically done it by doing bus and promoting bike. Mm -hmm. And not very many cities in the United States can say the same thing. Yeah. And it makes it actually makes buses much more viable though, because you know the bus is not going to drop you off in front of where you're going. Right. Bike sharing does. Yeah, we call yeah. it last mile, yeah. last mile yeah. solutions. A lot of people, wherever they live or wherever they're going to, it's that last mile. And if there's yeah. a bike available to take you from the transit station to where you work or where or school, it's perfect. And then back, and yeah. it's free, and it's a reliable bike, and it's there every day. Most people don't want to walk a mile, but well, they'll ride a bike. Yeah. What about what about uh, electric assist bikes? Like, how how do you feel about that? Where does that fit within um, all of this? Good, you know. I mean, so I, that's a curveball. That's a little bit of a curveball. No, it's ball. good. I was, yeah. I was I was hoping for curveballs. All and, right. And um, you know, I would say that um, my mind has changed totally. Wow. My first reaction was, you know, if seventy five percent of U.S. adults are overweight or clinically obese. Why do we need electric assist? We need to like burn calories. Mm -hmm. But then this summer I've had the opportunity to ride electric assist bikes and they're basically just like normal bikes, but they'll help you if you really need it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I have completely changed my perspective and I think that they're a good thing. So and a, how do you a feel? Bike mode, that mashup, basically. It's closer to a bike than a moped. Yeah. You guys talk. I'm going to look <clears> at some of these it's questions. Just, it's closer to a bike than a moped. And you know, I guess I had this idea that it was more like a moped and it was throttle twisting and zzz. Yeah. You yeah. got a good question? In this? No, I'm just looking. Okay. Yeah, um, I think what's uh, interesting is that, you know, I look at a, I, I'm actually not a terrified rider. I've, I know you whole life. You're right? in the one percent. It's in the one percent. Okay, okay I want to do that. Let's take that helmet question. Or, um, I'll finish that right. thought later. Let's sure? do the helmet question. So, so uh, uh, anti antiagency dot org. Wow, they're anti something. We are not helmet enthusiasts, and neither are oops, most kids. Most kids. How do you change this? New helmet designs. You know, that's I'm I. You better take that. I thought people are into helmets. Like I wear a helmet all the time except when I'm on my townie you know yeah. so like Me too. when it's sporty I wear the helmet and then probably when I probably actually I'm gonna revise this most of the time I don't wear a helmet but only when it goes with my biking outfit oh, do yeah. I wear a helmet Right. Right. That was a big twist. Wait, I was I was right with you before. It's, I kind of went no, totally the opposite way. Yeah, yeah. 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 So okay. get over it. Yeah. I think that's interesting. That that anti agency. What is that? Anti helmet dot org. That was ridiculous. Anti agency dot org. Anti agency. Most, most, most kids I know now, yeah, kind of feel naked without a helmet because they've grown up wearing helmets. So like when my kid goes out for a ride. And he doesn't have a helmet. He's, he, he's automatically. Where's my? My helmet? son's like fifty-fifty. So. Like half the really? time we get going somewhere, and and we're going downtown, and he's like, "Oh, I forgot my helmet. Should I go back?" And I'm like, "No." So how old's your son? He's six. No, I'm kidding. He's <laughs> <laughs> he's fourteen. <laughs> Okay, so I, I can take a deep breath on this one, all right? Yeah. So this is really a big thing, 
All right. In the um, in Europe, in the Netherlands, you know, where thirty or forty percent of all trips are taken by bike, yeah. almost no one wears a helmet. Right. And they they insist that that if you're riding at twelve miles an hour and everybody is sort of used to having bikes around, it's pretty safe, and there aren't a lot of head head injuries. Mm -hmm. In the U.S., you know, we're lit litigious society, right. and you know, they're skiing, everybody's wearing helmets, and there's a whole different thing, and. Um, you know, there are people who say that if we relaxed about helmets, a lot more people would ride bikes. Hmm. Uh, I don't know that I can give you a real concise uh, answer, but I do know that helmet design does help. Yeah. Um, you know, my dad had a thought, and he said if we could make uh, bike helmets look like he did, he he worked on a a Yankees and Mets bike Baseball helmet. Hats. You know, yeah. sort of you identify with your though. team. They, they have, have like, yeah. yeah. It yeah. just looks like your head's so giant. Right. right. And that's the problem. But, you know, what I would say is... Well, uh, I worked on Giro for a long time. That's right. And, and so, you that's know, right. I did a lot of work trying to convince people that, that helmets were cool. And I think in general, you look better with a helmet. Like, your head looks cooler with a helmet than it does without. Most heads, right? I think. So I... And, <laughs> but... But if you have a really nice head, then maybe go out without a helmet, you know? So how do you decide? Well, if you're, I think if you've lost your hair, you should wear a helmet. Like, I see these guys on Harleys, right? There's no helmet law in Colorado, right. and they're like, like this, yeah. and they've got no helmet on. A little hanger action. And, you're, and I just look at them, I'm like, you would look better if you covered this part of your head. Like, go with a helmet, or maybe your entire head. We should get that know? on the Fearless website, like a helmet shape. You see thing. guys on crotch rockets know. without helmets out here, and it's like, you, you know, yeah. you just, you don't look that good. Like, if you had encapsulated your head in a beautiful <laughs> painted helmet, you'll look better. So go that route. Uh, I well, I think that's, it's, it's actually odd, because more people in Colorado, wear helmets on bicycles than they do in motorcycles right I, now. I, just I don't know if that's actually statistically rockets, accurate. But. Crash rockets without helmets equals douchebag. So I right. just think you sort of have to put that there. All right. I'm time, sorry, Tom. Time, 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 no, time yeah. I ever said. This was the most uh, unusual discussion that I've ever heard um, on helmets on helmets and, and so I'll give you credit um, <laughs> we're going to places that I've never been before in this discussion but uh, we'll keep do, we'll keep, keep on keep that. going yeah, that's good that's good congratulations that's good so so uh, but I think there could be some new things done with helmet design I, one of the things that seems like it'd be necessary is a more portable helmet you know, with the world of bike sharing and stuff too. Yeah. You know, well, helmets are pretty hard to bring around. The other you know? thing with bike sharing is sort of this, this some other guy's sweaty helmet. You, you don't know? want that. No, and it's you worse know, so than the, bowling shoes, right? It's worse than bowling shoes. Far I worse. Say. Yeah, but yeah. you know what I would say. Bottom line is, kids have to wear helmets, and if you want to have the freedom to not wear a helmet as an adult and make that decision, yeah. Um, uh, I, I'm okay with that. It's, it's your personal choice. Uh, you know, there, there is one more thing, Alex, that's, I think, pretty important. When people who don't ride bikes see an adult wearing a helmet, I think that reinforces their perception that that's not me. That could never be me. I could never wear that uniform. I think the helmet is part of the uniform mm. that in some ways makes cycling into more of a niche activity. Or a sport. Yeah, right. right. So, I've, you know, I've got a friend who has this bike company, Public Bikes. Yeah. Do you know yeah, Public yeah, Bikes? Yeah, yeah. And their whole thing is to bring the utility bike concept to the U.S., which yeah. is brilliant. And, it is brilliant. And, and uh, we've never really had that here. We've had cycling as, you know, um, this kind of sport. It's mountain biking. It's BMX. Mm -hmm. It's road cycling. And all, each one has all this gear that you have to have just right. And the idea of just jumping on a bike, right, with or without a helmet, but just using it the same way you would a car, I think is, is new to us. And... Um, and you know, my wife and I will take our bikes and she'll put on like, she'll dress to the nine, she's got pumps on, and you know, we're riding around mm -hmm. and it, it's great. It's awesome. Like, it's what we want. It's, and, and you can see it tweak people's heads because we'll be in a restaurant and she's really dressed up and we go to leave and we don't get in a car, we unlock our bikes and people are like, damn, I could have dressed up and ridden my bike? Okay, I didn't realize that those two things went together. Yeah. You right, know? Copenhagen Eyes. Ever been to that website? It's a really, I have been yeah. there. Yeah. They they site. show they show pictures of yeah. people in everyday clothes, stylish. You know, ladies in uh, pumps. Right. No, and, right. And, and and there's some fashion sites that actually are infatuated with yeah. that too, like people who dress up to ride. That's I'm going to take another. Why is the Secretary of Transportation um, pushing so hard on bicycles as a transportation solution? Yeah. Why is this going on? <laughs>
It's it's awesome. So he's a re- former Republican congressman from Peoria, mm-hmm. Illinois, and probably on the surface the least likely person to ever really get into bicycling. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has been off the chart great. Do Republicans not like bikes? No. Yeah. Let's just stop there for was a second. Was it his shape or yeah. was it his party? Neither. <laughs> okay. No, a, a rural Peoria, Illinois, Southern Illinois. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, right? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I just don't want to throw out any biases. I think that there are no biases. Bicycling is universal. bipartisan. Bike, not, bike partisan? Yeah, not bipartisan. That's, nice. and that's not my thing. That's Earl Blumenauer, who's a congressman. Right. But it's not oh. a Democratic thing. Absolutely. It's not a Republican thing. Yeah. And to have LaHood, unlike any of the previous secretaries of transportation, he has been. He has a blog. It's called uh, the, the Fast Lane. Mm-hmm. And he writes about bicycling like once every other week. Amazing. And, because, and here's why he's into it. Because when people ride bikes, great things happen. Yeah, and it, it's a it's a solution, and it's not just a solution, at, you know, for uh, transportation ills. It's you know, it's all these other things that right. we always talk about. He knows the secret. Bikes he does. Ma- bikes make you happy. He does. And they make you happy. Just, that's yeah. for, that's, that's for good. sure. That that question, that was a good question. Yeah. I'm feeling <laughs> I'm feeling jacket on that question. <laughs> so, uh, this is uh, this is the official people for bikes. Dot org jacket, and that went to I know you, writer seventy two. That's a cool handle. Um, uh, yeah, we'll get better than that. Oh, yeah, that was good. That's LA good. didn't get the jacket. It's so, so you know, um, he's doing amazing things. He's he's uh, he's with the Fed, right? Yeah. But the real movement, and I could be wrong about this, but I feel like most of the momentum is with on the city level. Oh. It's happening with mayors, right? It's happening in cities. Oh, man. Yeah. So yeah. out of the 50 biggest U.S. cities, 45 of the mayors, maybe 47, are totally into it. They totally yeah. get it. You know, you can name any big city, and I can tell you, you know. I'm going to name a big city. Yeah, go ahead. New York City. Oh, perfect. Mayor Bloomberg, you know, yeah. first he had to uh, petition to get a third term. He's in his third term now. Mm-hmm. He's off the chart. Their primary goal as a city is to reduce carbon CO2 emissions by 30%. A, a lot of, well, a lot of, this, a lot of cities are deciding to take the role that, that the federal government mm-hmm. seems unable to, 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 to lead us yeah. in, in, into the, this reduction in CO2. So you've yeah. got all sorts of cities, you know, Boulder included. Yeah. But, you know, you can write off Boulder. It's easy for people to look at Boulder it's and small go, eh, it's herb. small. That's, that's, yeah. that's it. Well, it's small, it's hippie, they're fringe. But New York City. New York City. And Bloomberg. That's that matters. That's I mean, it really matters. It's really significant. Yeah, they're doing great things. If you go to Times Square, or you were, mm-hmm. you know, you should talk yeah. about it a little bit. I mean, you've ridden on the second or the eighth or ninth Avenue bikeways. All, All of it. Yeah, I love riding in New York. It's great. Yeah. It's uh, it's, it's getting better it's every day. Easier and easier every year. And I've had a place in New York for almost four years, and it mm-hmm. just. It's a piece of cake. Keep a bike at the office, ride everywhere. It's beautiful. Someone, someone said they just moved from New York to Minneapolis and they've never been yelled at as much as in they Minneapolis? have. Yeah, in, in Minneapolis? Yeah, in Minneapolis. That's supposed to be the number one... Oh, oh no, just moved to New York from... Oh, Bingo. that there sounds more likely. Okay. Yeah. I was liking it the other way. Yeah. <laughs> I Listen, you walk two steps the wrong direction in New York, you get yelled at. I mean... I don't yeah, know what, <laughs> but yelling is just experience. yelling is it's, just how people it communicate. It's part of the yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. I don't think they mean anything. No, but Minneapolis, <laughs> Minneapolis is great too. I mean, in Miami, people used to hit me with things like slushies right. and like I mean, it's really it was an angry, difficult place to ride. So as long as they're not hitting me, yeah. I'm actually okay with it. Even if you move, if you if you're on a ride and you get out of Boulder and you get into some of the outlying counties, it changes instantly, yeah. and yeah. the horns start to go off and stuff. But they're honking at you as they give you three feet of space. Right. So I'm always like, this is great. It's a honk of love. You didn't, yeah. You didn't hit me. You didn't hit me. Um, so, 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 um, but New York, I think most people would be terrified to ride in New York. I would actually, I think I would be terrified. Even coming out of uh, Miami, I would be worried. In parts, in parts, not all. You know, New York's different. You got to find a rhythm and a flow in New York. I mean, that's just the only way you can sort of do it well, except for the other areas that are marked now. But what's yeah. happening? Yeah, they're marking, right? They're closing lanes. There's what, marked what's areas. They're creating lanes. separated bike facilities. And yeah. so, you know, you started with the West Side Bikeway, you mm-hmm. know, that was really, really cool. And now it's right. going all across the city. So remember my thing about the 70%? Mm-hmm. I don't think the 70% in general would feel safe yet in New York, but they're, it's getting closer. But maybe the, maybe the tip of the 70% is starting to find some routes that they 
are riding. Yeah, right? and, and they're doing a million different things. But yeah. but the but the whole thing that they're doing, they're doing a lot with paint. Yeah. When we were talking about that before, yeah. but they're also sort of thinking about through routes that are seamless. Remember before you were saying that um, back when you were a kid, there was this four lane street that you had to cross yeah. and it was kind of hairy. Yeah. New York is thinking about that. How do you get from the east side to the west side, from right. uptown to downtown without ever having this moment of like total panic and terror? Yeah. How, how aware are you of the things that are going on? Um, I just leave that question there for a second. Um, in in South America, around around public transportation and cycling and closing streets and stuff like that. Well, we're really involved with you know. There's this thing called Ciclovia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it started in Bogota. Mm -hmm. Where basically they just shut down the whole city or they opened the city to the people on yeah. Sundays. Right. And they just said we're getting all cars and our all trucks out of here. And, and that was such a great concept. It's been picked up all over South America, all over the United States. We just had one here, yep. Green right. Streets. It was like right. you know, three weeks ago or a month ago. Right. Um, you know, I. it's amazing. I mean, when people actually get to be in the heart of their city without the noise of cars and trucks and, they, and they're riding bikes and there's music everywhere yeah. and people yeah. are dancing. Yeah. It's and amazing. It's, so and so I think that's coming. You know, it's happened in Chicago and Madison, San Francisco, New York. It's but coming. but in Bogota it's every Sunday, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's like a million people, right? And it and and you just it, it is a beautiful idea because why do you need to be open to cars and trucks on that day? It's right? like an officially sanctioned and celebrated version. It's of just uh, it, critical it, mass. It turn it turns the city the center of the city over yeah. to the people basically. It's yeah. not really a critical nice. mass. Thing. No, it's, it's not just critical that it's mass. Open. It's just that it's, it's a little more sanctioned version. Yeah, but I mean, but everyone that I've been to and I've been to a bunch. Yeah, I mean, I went to Guadalajara. Yeah, you know, which is a pretty big city in Mexico, and and, and they they basically shut down like a six mile circle, hmm. and it was just you just the whole time you're just smiling right. and your jaw is hanging and you're going awesome. It's weird because it seems like North Americans do not look to South America for progressive ideas, and there's a lot going on down there. In it. And you obviously don't have that bias. You're down there, and you're 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 pulling ideas, and and bringing them, in, you know, into North America. But do you feel that at all? I mean, I I feel that we just don't, you know, we think okay, maybe Europe's got something going on, and yeah. and, and in transportation, South America has yeah. got great stuff going on. That's a great point. You know, I I, I really think, except mm -hmm. you know, transportation professionals and engineers and planners, yeah. they know. Yeah. But yeah, we, we only think of the Netherlands and Germany, yeah. and then if it's technologically related, we think Japan. Right. And we figured the Chinese will figure it out and put the money and do yeah. it. You know, but we don't yeah. think about South America. No, and we need to because there's really progressive yeah. stuff. And I think you know, you, you, you talked about mayors and yeah. celebrating mayors. Yeah. Mayors are mayors. Are, they're becoming global, right? I, I mean, my favorite mayor is Mayor Hickenlooper, but yeah. Yeah. but mayors. Are looking all over the all over the world now for who's doing a great job in their city, and it's and and they're bringing the, those. I think great mayors are bringing those ideas from wherever. Yeah. So we have this other interesting project. It's called Bicycling Design Best Practices, and we take mayors and elected officials and engineers and planners. We take them to the Netherlands and to Germany and to the mm -hmm. best U.S. cities for bicycling. We take them on bike rides. We have them meet their counterparts, mm -hmm. and they come home so inspired and fired up filled with uh, enthusiasm and knowledge to yeah. make their cities bike friendly. And it's yeah. one of the best yeah. things we've ever done. Yeah. It's really going well. And do you think part of what's what's working with mayors is just local politics functions better still than national politics? <laughs> there's less you know, there's less room for special interest and there's just less, you know. Well, I just think um, it's easier to relate to. I mean, if you live in a city, you can see change. You know, whether you're a citizen or an elected right. official, a taxpayer, a business owner, it's just, it's a manageable scope. Right. I mean, the United States is so huge and it has so many different elements. But national, national policy used to work better. I think the, the, this, think we're getting works. off track. I think but, it still works, Alex. Don't, yeah. you know, don't. You're very don't, positive. Don't, I have to be. You I know, know that's I mean, your job. I, yeah, I mean, but the hard thing about the whole national thing right yeah. now, yeah. I would say is sort of the, level of acrimony and the negative ads, you know, just sort of like, you know, you know, you suck, you suck worse, you know, and just the, this yeah. election has right. not been very good. And the amount of uh, money that's coming in from the outside to disparage on a personal level, not on a issue level, yeah. candidates, that's very discouraging. Yeah. The tension in Congress between the administration and between, you know, the Democrats and Republicans, it's been worse than ever. 
But it's going to come around. I don't think it's done. I don't yeah. think it's forever. Okay, I do. You do? Well, yeah, I don't want to get into politics. Let's okay. stay on bikes. I, I, I've Good. got a different... I've got a different... I think change is po possible, and I think we will see great change. But I think that, you know... It's interesting that it's happening on the local level. It's interesting that mayors are saying, we're going to fix carbon. We're not going to wait for you to do it. Uh, and, and I think that that's because we have to. You know? But I think there's we have to part fix of it our too. Cities. Part of it is also private donations and private funding for it. Corporate. You know, and how, do, how do we engage the corporations in the different cities as well? I think mayors have skin in the game, and that's why they're more um, active and, and more engaged in making that happen on a local level. But I think the real key is gonna be corporations. It's such a budgetary, it's such a low priority from a budgetary standpoint that. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I have you, one idea. Okay. I, okay, just real quick. I was gonna take a question, but I'm not gonna take it. I'm gonna. Let me, let me go quick, right. okay? So government, federal government is not gonna solve all of our problems, but they can still set a tone. Right. They can still lead, they can still inspire. Government, federal government is not going to solve all the problems. There still is a meaningful role in bicycling mm -hmm. for the federal government, a positive role. Doesn't mean they're going to pay for everything. Doesn't mean that they're going to tell or inspire everybody to ride. I think we have too high an expectation for what the president can do, mm -hmm. what Congress can do. And I do think that- it I don't. My expectation is like so low, you, you can't even imagine. So. <laughs> can I ask one question? How's it going in DC yeah. with bicycle sharing? Or excuse me, just bicycling in general. Good. Yeah. yeah. Good. I mean, you know, the mayor is an avid bike rider. Okay. The mayor right. of DC. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the you know there now are bike lanes on Pennsylvania Avenue between the White House mm -hmm. and Capitol. You know, the most Ooh. famous street probably. They got bike sharing. Yeah, they got bike sharing with 1,100 bikes. They have all these mm -hmm. new yeah. trails coming in from every direction. I heard you on the radio the other. I don't know, maybe a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, and it could have been an old old interview. Must but, have been. But. Uh, the woman interviewing you thought that you had a budget of five billion dollars. Do you remember this interview? Yeah. And she's like, "What are you going to do with the five billion dollars?" And I, I was thinking, "There's no way they have five billion dollars to spend on bikes." What but do you mean? What do you mean? Of course we have five billion dollars. Yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, look at our swag. Right. <laughs> yeah. You, you think uh, this comes cheap? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I mean, still, the federal government has you know sp invested four and a half billion dollars in the last five years. It's a lot of money. Into cycling. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Record. And that's our work, you know. So you were saying before, Tim, are you a lobbyist? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I do and, and we support yeah. is lobbying. And I will never feel bad for a second about trying to convince the federal government to invest in bicycling. I, I, I mean... Well, I, you're spending your life on this, right? Yeah, You've dedicated yeah. your life to this. Pretty much. And you're, and, you're, and you're in D.C. and you're making it happen, <laughs> I think. And... and can people give to what you're doing? Is that possible? Yeah, we have a foundation. You, you know, we have a bike, bike swung foundation. You know, the best thing they can do is sign the pledge for people for bikes that we should talk about a little bit. Let's more. talk about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, we don't, you know, we don't need money more than we need people. We need people to just stand up and say, you know what? When people ride bikes, good things happen. Count me in. I support it. I'd like to see bicycling. What do you do with that? So if people, if people sign this pledge, yeah. Is that give you a tool that you then take in to yeah. somebody's office okay. and say, Senator, look at this. All right, I'll be me and you be uh, a U.S. Senator. Okay, you okay. ready? Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Cut uh, your hair. Uh, no, no, no. It's a new generation of, of senators. Okay. So, um, so Senator um, Bogusky, um, I'm here. I just want you to know that one million Americans. I got to tell you, I only have five minutes. I've got an oil lobbyist outside, and I, you know, we can and, talk with him. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have one million people who have signed our pledge to support bicycling, and they really would like you to support bicycling in the next transportation bill. <clears throat> A million? Yeah. And guess how many of those people live in your state? How many? <laughs> 200,000. Do you think they'll vote for me if I... If you make a strong enough positive statement and support bicycling, perhaps. There's, there's, uh, I, I mean, the concern I have is that, um, that if I, if I, if I support cycling and it looks like I'm not supporting really cars, right? right. That, that... There's a lot of money that's going to be poured in the election, the next election to defeat me. Like, how can you make me? We only need that? about one and a half percent of federal transportation funding. Don't worry, you can still give, you know, eighty percent to to. But highways. someone's going to someone's going to make a commercial that I've given to like bikes, you know, and that bikes are a communist plot, a socialist, a tool. socialist, yeah, a socialist tool to change our 
right. to, to undermine the fabric of our, our country. So I know the oil lobbyist is waiting, <laughs> but, but um, um, do you think that your constituents, the people who live in your state, are going to take that seriously and buy into it and not vote? For you, because they think it's a communist plot. No, because I live in Colorado, and <laughs> a rational state. Full yeah, of it's the least of be safe, and yeah. you're happy to be here. All right, all right, good. All right. Thank Deal. you very much. All right, yeah. uh, thanks for coming. Thanks out. for your vote. All right. You didn't hit him up on the gas tax yet. No, that's next. That's next meeting. Would a nationwide bike club where people could come together and ride as a giant group bring more people to riding bikes? That's from T Keck. Wow. Hmm. Like well, a big group of millions of people. In one well, place. I kind of feel like that's what we're trying to do with I people think, for bikes. Yeah, I you know, that, um, we're saying, and you hit on it before. Regardless of what kind of bike you ride, or where you ride, or how important it is to you, there's room for you. This is not a club. Right. Um, anybody yeah. should be able to ride a bike and feel good about it. But yeah, uh, I mean, we don't want it to be exclusive. And well, how do you feel about how do you feel about things like like critical mass? That's got to be a little tricky for you because it gets yeah. contentious, and I, you know, my feeling is you don't want to create a, a battle between cars and bikes. Yeah, right? yeah, not at all. I mean, cars are not the enemy. Let's yeah. that, that that last question gets one of these. A beer opener. Yeah, a beer opener. Yeah. for um, all of their friends. Cars are not the enemy. So my my short answer is good cop, bad cop. Mm -hmm. um, having bad cops who, in essence, are critical mass riders is not a bad thing mm. because it makes more mainstream, level-headed bike advocates, yeah. it actually helps us, I yeah. think. You know, it sort brings of like, attention, right? I mean, it's not necessarily the best attention, but to your point, it does sort of make everybody else feel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or it, it makes governments look at the others. Right, and, and, I, you know, and the thing is, I've learned not to get tweaked. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you sort of wring your hands and you say, oh my God, these critical, you know, look, if they're riding bikes and they want to see bicycling be better and yeah. safer, I'm in favor of it. Do you think that the the Boulder ride, the Thursday cruiser ride, is that a critical mass ride in you, in your opinion? No, it's a celebration of bicycling. Uh, it's pretty zany. It's pretty fun. It's it, it's fine. The only thing that um, I don't like is when it when it gets to be so big and it, you know it's awesome. Yeah. You know I'll, I'll 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 get home and I'll go out to the edge of the street and just watch, take it all in. When sometimes on a little street. They won't leave. They won't allow cars to go through. Right. And so, and the procession is like it's seven a, minutes long. It's like a so, it's like a really long train. Right. So you, you're stuck I understand in, yeah. why people get pissed off. You know. So just a yeah. little bit of courtesy, if they and I think they do this. Yeah. They give gaps and let people move on their way. Is the um, one of, one of the potential benefits? I, you always feel more comfortable if there's other riders around. And and one of the mm. benefits of of really strong infrastructure that people are aware of is it aggregates riders into a space right so if you know there's there's here's the here's the north south corridor yeah. in manhattan yeah everyone goes there and 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 you see riders and you feel more comfortable and 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 the drivers see riders and they understand that they're sharing the space with you yeah i mean that's exactly right that's right out of our playbook which is the more people who ride the safer bicycling becomes mm -hmm. because motorists expect to see right. people riding bikes yeah like, you know i don't know what, what your experience is but yeah definitely it's a psychological advantage I'm, I'm curious a little bit about your thoughts on the two mile challenge yeah and what cliff bar is doing yeah. and a friend of gary's yeah good just I go back to that interesting that yeah um and and alex you've yeah, probably seen this statistic before but i think it's 40% of errands are within two miles of your home. Right. 90% of those errands are done by car. Yeah, so 24% yeah. uh, of all trips that Americans make are one mile or less. Right. 39% are two miles or less. And I mm -hmm. think that this this Cliff Bar program, Two Mile Challenge, is just so logical. Because like you said, I don't know that people are going to walk two miles or even a mile. Right. But I think we're all a little bit robotic, or I should say set in our ways, where we tend to automatically grab the keys yeah. regardless of where we're going. Now, sometimes yeah. you need to. Right. Well, what if, um, I want to just read this question and... and, and uh, um, we got to give away this bag, right? Because they've actually asked for swag at the end of the question. Oh there, are, <laughs> there are lots of bike paths where I, li where I live, but they're also isolated. What can be done um, to thread them together? Um, where do you live? Clicker Rick. At Clicker Rick. Um, so send out this. Are you giving that? To, That's awesome. Yeah. We got to give it out. Like we're running out of time. Send in a better, send in some better questions, and we got a T-shirt for somebody. Um, 
the uh, so what do you do? How do you thread them together? Is that a, well, something that you work on? Yeah, or? it is. Yeah. It, you know, but it starts with uh, the city planners and the engineers. You mm -hmm. know, they got to look at. They got. It's a system. Yeah. You know, it's no good if it's great, 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 horrible and right. uncrossable. Right. right. So you know, one of the things that we're really proud of here is I think we have 76 bike underpasses in the city of Boulder. Yeah. That's more than any other city in the United States. Really? But, you know, so think about it. If without those bike underpasses, you'd get stuck at really, really right. busy roads right. with people turning right, left, driving fast, four lanes each way. Yeah. Um, so, the you know, we call it connectivity and systems. And, you know, every engineer and planner who does this bike stuff is thinking that way. It's a lot easier said than done. You know, retrofitting is there, is is there if 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 the if the person out there um, lives somewhere, yeah. is there a way to connect yes. their local government with you? Yeah, with and it wouldn't be us. You know, I mean, one thing that I haven't said yeah. is that we have a lot of partners mm -hmm. who know more about a lot of these things than we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you know, there's a, a national group that's called the Alliance for biking and walking mm -hmm. and they have a map on their website of the United States and you could just click on your city or put in your zip code and it'll give you the local group and it'll help you dial into the local issues. That's cool. They'd be better at that than we would. When we post the show, we'll post a whole bunch of links yeah. that'll be tools that people can use if yeah. you can yeah, help help. They're me like with that. There are like six other groups, you know, national groups and we try to unify them and bring out the best, but they're good. So you mentioned Boulder as yeah. having, you know, the mo the most uh Underpasses of yeah, yeah. We got a lot of things. We have the biggest mode share uh, of people riding bikes to work in the United States. Hmm. Twelve point six percent in the last uh, American Community Survey. Wow. Of Are riding who, bikes of people who live in Boulder usually who go, are going to work, right. usually ride bikes, 12.6. Wow. And it's wow. that's higher than that's in Portland, Oregon, Davis, California, anywhere yeah. else. And and. Uh, Maybe this is, I, I, I didn't mean for it to be bolder. Maybe this is, maybe, maybe it's not. But globally, yeah. what is the infrastructure gold standard? Is there one? Is there a oh, city that you yeah, look at and you're like, yeah. this is it? Well, there are two. You know, Copenhagen, mm -hmm. you know, which is close to 40% and determined to go up to 50. That's mm -hmm. one. 40%, what does that number represent? 40% daily or 40%? Yeah. 40, 40 Basically, 40% of all trips that people in that city make are made by bike. Wow. It's the fastest way to get from point A to point B, and that's their goal. They don't, they don't even emphasize any of the green stuff. You know, it's they, just fast. They just say, if you want to get from point A to point B fast and reliably and cheaply, mm -hmm. ride your bike. Mm -hmm. The other standard for sure is the Netherlands, and there, there are a bunch of cities yeah. in the Netherlands that are close to 50%. Wow. They've been working on it for 40 years. They're and really, Amsterdam. really good. And if you use that same oh, metric, what would what would Boulder be? What would that number be? No, Boulder would probably be about eight. Okay. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't be 12.6. It would no. be seven or eight. Right. You know, all trips. I was all gonna trips. I go back to Amsterdam as an example. Mm -hmm. Separate bike paths. Yep. Stoplights for mm -hmm. bicycles. Yep. I mean, an entirely separate infrastructure. Yeah. You know, yeah, and you, you know they just they they see bicycling not as a fringe thing. They see it as a mainstream transportation it, well, and recreation solution. At yeah. that point, it, it is. It but represents the we, half the. So so it probably um, it's larger. It may be the it be, if you if you took car trips and and train and and bus, it yeah. may be the largest segment. It is okay. Yeah. The, the so this was for the T-shirt. Question now. for the T-shirt. Let's do that. Should first. there be a bicycle license, a bicyclist license out there? Yeah, my 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 Matt short Thomas, answer. Thomas, yeah. And my short answer is no, because when I hear that, uh, I think of only one thing. Uh, it's a way for people who have issues with the way that bicyclists ride to report them. Mm. And, and you know, I think that bicyclists mm. have an obligation to obey, obey, you know, stop at stop signs, stop at lights, be predictable. Um, we have that responsibility, but it feels a little bit like prison to me. Yeah. That's sort of my gut. And I agree, we, and I think we should get rid of the license for cars, too. Just really do? open it up. Yeah. <laughs> or at least motorcycles next. Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's, yeah. uh, that's, that's, that's the second third. time no, that's, I've been able yeah, to... Yeah, second. So you're, you're now like you're, you're, I don't know, you're a lieutenant. I'm a lieutenant. Okay, by the end, I want you to be a general. Okay. Excellent, okay. excellent. Um, <laughs> Love it. I don't know. I you know you can see I've got a little libertarian kind of streak as well, but which is good. Yeah, it's all right. Untethered. Untethered. No licenses for anything. <laughs> see, that's good. You're, this is good Ed McMahon role. You know, for just, sure. Right. Okay. The um, the uh, yeah, the the idea of a bicycle license. Um, I don't know. It would it would be it would be weird to take my 
kids down to the uh, DMV. No, it'd be weird to have to take your. That's kids. what I mean. Yeah. We, we, well, I don't mind. I don't mind taking them to like a you know. Uh, 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 well, they have classes, right? Just the people come into the school and they teach them to, you know, jump curbs and do stuff. That's all. That's all great. But I just don't really want them photographed and thumbprinted. And... Would that discourage them? You know, make yes. them less likely to ride yeah. bikes? So I think so. They, I think yeah. it's a bad idea. Yeah. Um, should there be a law passed where households must own a bike and use them for short distance travel? Yes, M- Mario. Absolutely. Delaney. <laughs> no, I I don't know. I I'm not I'm not for a lot of new laws. Um but uh a suggestion. Maybe, How about yeah. a suggestion passed? Yeah. Uh, I'm so, a guest, I'm a guest here. I'll let you guys handle this one. Sticker <laughs> sticker for Mario. Um Well, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't seem like you should force people. In Boulder there's that law where you have to have a dog. I think that's enough, right? <laughs> like like you know, you have to have a golden retriever when you come across the border. And that just seems to me that's excessive already. I wouldn't want to see any more. So that's three. So Am I a general again? <laughs> no, you're you no, you're a lieutenant general. Okay. Right. That, that was good. It was weak. I'm gonna get dragged away here because it was weak. um I don't have a dog right now, so um but I mean, I think that people should own a bike. One thing, oh, you know what I'd love to cover actually is, is uh, I always tell my friend at Public Bikes that if my wife had to pump up the tires to her car every time she came out to use it, she wouldn't drive her car either, right? She would have, she'd call someone, she'd get a taxi, right? And, and bikes, they're wonderful, but unless you're somewhat versed in the fact that stuff goes wrong, they need oil, you gotta pump up the tires, you'll need a pump, you'll wanna keep that stuff together, you know, maybe you want a helmet. Unless you're somewhat versed in it, most people walk out and they think, we're gonna go for a ride, and one of the bikes or all of the bikes has a flat tire. Good point. It's a huge problem, I think. You are now a general. Full Ooh, general. nice. Because that yeah. actually, you know, it, it, it sounds so simple and so basic. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure that, you know, 5% of casual bike rides are aborted before they ever begin because you go to the yeah. garage and you look and you don't have a pump mm-hmm. or you don't know how to put the pump onto you know, right. the right valve. Right. Yeah, I mean, so I know that... And then you think, okay, I'll take it to the bike store. We'll just jump in the car. I'll do the bike store thing and I'll get it going. And you forget that you have to. And then you do the same thing a yeah. month later when you decide to go for a ride. Yeah, that's, I mean, I know that they've experimented with, uh, you know, tubeless tires tires and airless tires and solid tires that add a lot of weight. Um, You know, um, you're a good thinker. Let's let's keep talking about this. Well, I mean, I I, I actually, um, I I worry that, that, that what happens is because the industry, you know, supports each other, that... That, they're, that, that the accessory people put pressure on, you know, and actually the bike shops put pressure on the manufacturers and, and probably don't want the manufacturers to come out with flatless bikes um, that, with tires that can't go flat. Because if you're a bike no. shop, you gonna, make a lot of money with people just coming in and changing tires. Service is, is the it's most number profit. one. Is, yeah, you don't yeah. make money selling bikes. Yeah, but I mean, I think that anybody who works in the business would trade more people riding bikes yeah. more often for yeah. I'd rather for, sell more hardware. It's a I, simple well, yeah. uh, you know, it's a simple thing. In off-road motorcycle riding, they use they use foam tubes, yeah. right? Cuz you right. can't in the Baja in the Baja 500, you can't you know, right. you can't run a tube. It just won't work. So th- th- it's not that the technology doesn't exist. So I find it a little mysterious mm. that no one in America has has designed and marketed and pushed a bike that never goes flat. Because if you were selling it to, to my wife and, and, uh, and a lot of other people who are experiencing what we all know people experience, which is flat tires, um, they'd say, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm not a racer. I don't need the performance. I, I'll go with that. It, it is a great question for you. Yeah. I mean, why is the industry in such a conspiracy to make our lives miserable? Mm-hmm. You know? Boy, That's really the question, I guess. Yeah. Wow. Um, you've We're just kidding. been de- demoted from a sergeant to a corporal. I mean, to me, I feel No like, jacket for you. Right. No I, I feel like the industry um, gets it these days. You know, yeah. I, feel, I feel like, um, you know, they're making it less of a club. They're more open. They're focusing on transportation yeah. bikes and urban solutions. And they, and, and they realize that, you know, it's been way too much of an old boys thing and not open. The diversity of bicycling is not very good. Right. Uh, w- women and families have not been welcomed. 
and that's all changing. It's Do you think some of it though could be just because the industry is, if you're in the industry, you tend to be a bike person, like really into some aspect of the sport of cycling. Yeah. And, and so it is a little silly. If you're into performance cycling, you'd be like, eh, that's a little silly. I don't think we want to do that. Yeah. I don't know. There, Isn't the, that the, the this for year, public bikes, though? I mean, the whole urban bicycling movement. Well, I think public I mean, bikes should have a no flat option. But, you know, yeah. the only thing that's really out there, I think Hutchinson or somebody has got some some technology. It's like an there, $80 tire. Yeah, but there, there are a couple others. Yeah. Um, you've, you hit on a good point, you know. So, yeah. so I'm not going to beat it to death. Okay. Okay. We can move on. Let's take another question. I think we're out of stuff, though. Do we have any more stuff to give away? I mean, I'll give away this jacket. I yeah. Give away the. All right. The last. Fine. Let's see if we have a really. Well, uh, yeah, the jacket it's off real, the back. It's yeah. got to be really good. Yeah, but it's actually, we would we'd yeah. replace we'd, it with a new one. We'd clean wash one. it. Yeah, we'd, we'd wash, wash it, it yeah. thoroughly. What's the way to get an older demographic interested mm. in bicycles as compared to the younger generation? Uh, I love that. That's a good one. That's a good question. That's actually that's worth, worth a jacket. jacket. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm right with you. That's actually your electric assist thing. No, well, that's one. That's one way. I mean, it starts with separated mm-hmm. facilities, but there's this great, great program. It's called Eight Eighty Cities. Mm-hmm. So it's the number eight hyphen eighty number eighty mm-hmm. cities dot org. We'll put that link when we post. Yeah, the it's show. really good. So basically, their idea is that if you can make a city or a town appealing for eight year olds and eighty year olds, yeah, the needs and desires of everybody else will be taken care of. And I think it's, this guy is uh, his name is Gilbert Penalosa. He's from That's Bogota. Kind of real. I love that. Isn't that great? 80 yeah. cities. So uh, go to that site and they yeah. I've never heard of that. It's really really good idea. So, you know, I think electric assist though is a pretty interesting idea for for mm-hmm. for, for older people. Yeah. I see guys you know in their 80s just hauling you know right. through Boulder and you're like, how is he going that fast? Yeah. It does bring up one more thing that we didn't touch upon, though, with electric assist. We're almost out of time. So um, with electric assist and bike lanes, there's some argument over whether electric assist bikes go too fast and could be a danger within that bike lane. Now, I say I was talking to the city about it uh, day before yesterday. I yeah. say no problem. I was I was fearful of that. Yeah. And if it was mopeds and 30 miles an hour, yeah. yes. Uh, but most of these electric assist bikes will take you up to 18. Yeah. And I would say that on a crowded bike path, 18 doesn't work. But right. there are a lot of people riding regular bikes going 18, and then it doesn't work. You know, because yeah, around here, there's people riding yeah. regular bikes going 30. You know, so. On bike paths. Yes. But an electric assist bike, yeah. it's not 18 or zero. You can right. actually modulate I mean, electric speed a little bit. Yeah, yeah it's so awesome. I agree. Work. I agree. Okay. I, th- I, I think that they, they totally make sense and, and they're important to the infrastructure. I'd like to actually see electric assist you know, move into bike sharing too. You know, so that I agree. bike sharing becomes you know it would multimodal. Extend the range is yeah. what it would do. It would mean that instead of people doing bike share for four miles, they would do eight, mm-hmm. maybe. Mm-hmm. You know, there's one thing I don't know how much because we're time. yeah we're really yeah let's okay. do it. I, I just I just want to get people to sign the pledge for people for bikes. Okay, that's the one thing that I would ask. Okay, and I hope that's okay. fair. It is. Can I hold can, this? Can or? we go? Can we go here? We can yeah. zoom into that. Um, go to this URL yeah. and sign sign this pledge. This is um, the leverage, basically. It's a that, campaign to unify a million voices behind bicycling. It's free. There's no membership. Yeah. Um, we may. Do you get uh, anything when you sign the pledge? Uh, the satisfaction that no one can sign the movement. That's yeah. the most yeah. important thing. Happiness. And yeah. then and then uh, but and then what you get is you take that that tool and I go see and, Mr. Senator and you make stuff happen. So if you love bikes and you're not signing that thing. Then you're you're kind of screwing up. I'm I'm trying not to use the F word really, is what's happening. Um, I haven't signed this yet, and I've known about it for a while. I'm going to sign it this afternoon. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to get it done. I'm not. No, I don't think yeah. that you should. I just want to be unhappy. I'm yeah. like. <laughs> I don't think that you should. If everyone does it, it'll just be weird too, and it won't be cool. So I'll do it. You don't do it. Right on. Anyway, if you guys out there okay. can can do it. What, did, what rank did we... You lost a lot. Of <laughs> no. No, you're, you're, you're fine. You're Every, okay. Everyone. You're, you're up. I'm like private minus two class. No, yeah. you're... you're up. <laughs> How many people have signed it so far? 160,000. That's pretty good. It's okay. Yeah, you know that's pretty good. Well, we got to get it to a million, and we got to do that in the next year or fourteen months. And I don't see any reason why we can't if we can get the word out because there's you know if you ride a bike, yeah, for any reason you should you want to support bicycling and not you know no money, mm-hmm. no membership, no club, all positive. Right. 
Well, I think it's important for people to know that you've got access to the people that they want to bring around to, to, mm -hmm. to what bikes can do. We do. Yeah. We I really mean, do. I know that you do. I, I know the meetings that you're in. I yeah. know the people that you talk to. They're the heavy hitters and, and, uh, and they, they've got the money and, and it's, it's changing. And the work that you've done is actually probably for in a very, very large part why, why it's changing. Yeah. There's a lot of great things happening, yeah. but I, I, you know, I've known what you've been up to for a long time and there's, there's no doubt that, you know, you could draw a line from where you've been to where the money went and to, and to the, you know, to the new infrastructure that we're getting. And so, you know, I, I'm really appreciative. I'm actually a little choked up about it. I really am appreciative. And, and I think my sons appreciate it, appreciate it and he doesn't know. Um, but, but, uh, but our whole family and this community and communities all over yeah. the country, um, are benefiting from the work you're doing. So thanks and support it, sign the thing because that's the, that's the fuel that you run on. Right? Wow. Thank you so much. Yeah, you Thank bet. You. Thanks for Thank coming you. on. Thank Amazing. you. It's fun. Thanks for yeah. all the hard work yeah. you're doing. Thank you. All right. So now we're going to shut it down and we'll pretend to talk for a little bit to give it that sort of TV vibe. I'm not quite as choked up as you. But you're not pretending awesome. to talk. You're really talking. Really talking. Yeah. yeah. See, that's very. <laughs> just so not a People always forget. Yeah. So far, no one's ever got the end of the show right. I got it right. I got it. <laughs>